Uh, welcome back. So in this question, we're doing another excise tax example uh, and doing it on uh, cigarettes. This is taken from Krugman Wells Microeconomic Second Edition, uh, Chapter Seven, Question Five. Um, it's doing excise tax, and then I think it's dealing with like uh, elasticities, that sort of thing. Okay, so what it says: In the United States, each state government can impose its own excise tax on the sale of cigarettes. Uh, suppose that the state of North Texarkana, some made-up state, um, the state government imposes a tax of two dollars per tax per pack sold within the state. In contrast, the, the neighboring state of South Texarkana imposes no tax on cigarettes. Assume that in both states the pre-tax price of, of uh, cigarette is one dollar. Then assume that the total cost to a resident of North Texarkana to smuggle a pack of cigarettes from the south to the north is uh, one dollar and fifty-eight cents per pack. And then this includes, you know, all cost and everything. Uh, and then assume the supply curve for cigarettes is neither perfectly elastic or perfectly inelastic. Um, part B asks, sorry, Part A asks, draw a diagram of the supply and demand curves for cigarettes in Tex North Texarkana, showing a situation in which it makes economic sense for a uh, North Texarkanan to smuggle packs of cigarettes from the south to the north, and then explain with the diagram. So I've kind of done a little bit of the work ahead of time already. Let's see if I can fit everything in the screen here. Okay. So we're drawing a diagram, supply and demand curves for cigarettes, showing the situation in which it makes sense to smuggle. Okay. A few things that we talked about. So the supply curve here, this is just S. Um, let me block out some stuff that you don't need to see quite yet. Yeah. Okay. We'll get to that in part uh, B. So you got price of cigarettes on the vertical axis, uh, you know, properly labeled and everything. Got prices running up, low prices down here, high prices at the top. You got quantity of cigarettes on the horizontal axis, low quantity here, high quantity there. You got a su uh, supply curve that's neither inelastic nor perfectly elastic, so it's neither a straight line nor a perfectly vertical line. And then you got this demand curve. Uh, we're told that before the tax showed up, so when you just have regular supply, regular demand. Um, we had an equilibrium uh, price of a dollar, and then I just kind of arbitrarily, you know, the quantity of cigarettes sold is not important to this situation. So uh, part A asked to draw a supply and demand curve for cigarettes in Texas North Arcana, showing a situation in which it makes sense to smuggle uh, from the south to the north. So what I did here is I made a curve such that the demand for cigarettes is pretty inelastic. So an inelastic demand curve. Uh, implies that given a change in price for cigarettes, you don't expect that big of a change in quantity for cigarettes. So inelastic goods are generally thought to be stuff that are fairly like uh, you know close to necessities, you know things that we kind of want, um, no matter what the price is. Um, cigarettes usually matches that description, particularly for people fairly addicted. Okay, so we get the tax here. So uh, how, first off, how do we add in the tax? Uh, you start off with the supply curve here, and then for every um, for every point along the supply curve, we're shifting it upwards or inwards by that two dollars because the excise tax in the north was two dollars. So where before, uh, let's say this was some price down here, the point up here is going to be that price plus two dollars uh, for every single point here. So for example, this one dollar matched the supply curve here. If you were to draw a vertical line right up. It would be uh, $3 exactly at that point up there. Okay, and now, you know, kind of drawn rather arbitrarily, definitely the demand curve is going to be, you know, um, near vertical line, fairly steep and inelastic, meaning that it's inelastic. Um, but fairly arbitrarily, I put in these two points here. Um, so our new supply curve plus the excise tax intersects the demand curve at this point, such that the equilibrium price is this $2.90. So before the equilibrium price was a buck, adding in the tax, the new equilibrium price is 290. Um, note that we have a little bit lower quantity in the market. Great. Okay, so what happens here? Uh, how is this, you know, the question says, showing a situation in which it makes sense for uh, people to smuggle cigarettes. So back over in South Texarkana, the cigarettes are still going for a dollar. Uh, and then we're told that the smuggling cost is a buck eighty-five. So if you're in South Texarkana, 
you see a cigarette there, and it's a dollar. Uh, if you were to smuggle it to the north, that would cost a dollar eighty-five. So bringing the total to two dollars and eighty-five cents. If you wanted to sell it in the north, so you could go. Um, you have two choices as a, a North Texarkana. You could either pay two dollars and ninety cents. Um, you know, so you're you're buying in Texas North Texarkana legally, and you're paying that tax. Or you could buy one of these smuggled cigarettes um, that are selling for two dollars and eighty-five cents. The two dollars and eighty-five cents reflect the one dollar. In South Texarkana, plus the 185 smuggling fee. So if you're given a choice between two identical things, one with a price of 285, uh, and one with a price of 290, uh, you're the the rational person is going to choose the cheaper one, the two dollars and 85 cents. So you can see um, this is a situation where it makes economic sense for those North Texarkanans to be purchasing smuggled packs from the South. Uh, and the key here was actually the elasticity, the inelasticity of this demand curve. And the reason why, we'll find out with part B. So in part B, it says draw a corresponding diagram showing a situation in which it does not make economic sense for North Texarkana to smuggle packs of cigarettes from the south to the north and explain with the diagram. So, okay, so I was pretty careful. This supply curve here um, I did is identical to this supply curve. And then the new shifted up supply curve is pretty identical to the old one. The only thing different is that this demand curve here, uh, you can see it's D with a, an E above it, uh, is for an elastic demand curve, you know, a fairly elastic demand curve. Okay, so uh, the initial demand and supply, you know, is once again at a dollar right here. Uh, and then the quantity is, you know, something arbitrary. So we add in the tax. So this point going straight up is $2. Um, and in this market that has a fairly elastic demand, uh, remember an elastic demand implies that given a change in price, uh, quantity demanded change relatively more than in the elastic case. Sorry, from the inelastic case. So elastic demand means if you change price by some amount, quantity demanded is going to shift a lot more than in this inelastic case. Uh, and you can see it in a second. So you had four um, equilibrium price was a dollar with this demand curve. You now have the equilibrium price, uh, including the excise tax, at two dollars and fifty cents. Um, what's not completely apparent here, um, and you know, I, I, I'm not, we're not given actual quantities, um, but what definitely happened is with this elastic demand, the shift from this, from the initial quantity in the market of cigarettes, uh, shifted in a lot more with this elastic demand than in this case over here. So you can see quantity shifted from this point to this point with inelastic demand, but quantity um, shifted from this point a lot more to this new equilibrium quantity with the elastic demand. So that's the first thing. Um, first off, quantity shifts a lot more with the elastic demand, given the same you know, increase in tax. The next thing is, uh, you know, I kind of arbitrarily chose this point, but uh, you know, I had to choose it to conform to that question. So the new equilibrium price is $2.50. Um, so the price that consumers have to pay is $2.50. Uh, so let's compare, let's give those two options again. Um, you're in North Texarkana, uh, and you go to the store, and you see the legal price for cigarettes of $2.50. And that reflects the current price of $0.50 cents plus that $2 excise tax fee, so $2.50. And then your other option is an illegal smuggled cigarette that's coming from the south, and they uh, and in the south you could pay you could buy these cigarettes for a dollar, and then it cost 185 per pack to smuggle it up. So given the choice between a legal 250 and an illegal uh, 2.85 cents, you're first off just going to choose the lower price. Um, good. So that's this is a situation where it does not make economic sense to purchase that illegal smuggled cigarette. Great, so let's move on to the next question. The next question here at C is, uh, suppose the demand for cigarettes in North Texarkana is perfectly inelastic. Uh, how high could the cost of smuggling a pack of cigarettes go until the North Texarkana no longer found it profitable to smuggle? So first off, let's think about what is inelastic demand. Uh, what is perfectly inelastic demand? So recall here, this is uh, an elastic demand curve. You know, it's, it's closer to flat. Uh, it means that given a change in price, you get a relatively big change in quantity demanded. 
Here's a here's an inelastic demand curve. You know, it's, it's not perfectly inelastic, but it's relatively inelastic. So given the same change in price, you get a smaller change in quantity demanded. And now this uh, that I took from a website that I found from like a Pepperdine thing website, uh, you know, for Krugman stuff, uh, it has a perfectly inelastic demand curve. Perfectly inelastic demand curve is no matter what the price for this pack of cigarettes, uh, people are going to demand the exact same quantity. So perfectly inelastic demand. So suppose the demand is perfectly inelastic, how high could the cost of smuggling a pack of cigarettes go until the North Texas Canada no longer found a profitable to smuggle? So first off, let's start with the $1, right? Uh, we then have uh, the excise tax of 2 bucks. So I'm going to add that in. So from point E here to here, um, well, this is basically we want something on top of the supply curve, and then we want to shift it up by two dollars. Okay, so this is our this new supply curve, which includes the excise tax, uh, is shifted inwards, uh, and it's shifted inwards by these that two dollar excise tax. So where before you had a dollar here, you now have a um, dollar plus two is the three dollars. So um, so in North Texarkanan, the equilibrium, the new equilibrium price and quantity is equilibrium price of $3 per cigarette, and the equilibrium quantity, the new one, is exactly what the same it was before. Uh, and then the question is, well, what's the maximum excise tax that you could do? Well, back with a, when the smuggling fee was this $185, let us go through that economic Kind of train of thought now. So you're in North Texas Canon and you see legal cigarettes for sale for three dollars uh, and then you see the smuggled cigarettes for sale for two dollars and eighty five cents you know the one dollar um, price back into the south plus the one dollar and eighty five cents smuggling fee makes two dollars and eighty five cents. What price are you going to pay? Well you're going to pay uh, the cheaper price the one for the illegal smuggle price. Uh, now let's say Let's increase that smuggling price, the smuggling fee, to a dollar and ninety cents. So now you're comparing three dollars to two dollars and ninety cents. You know that two dollars and ninety cents reflects the one dollar price that they paid in the south plus the one dollar and ninety cents smuggling fee. You're going to still choose the lower price. So you're going to choose the uh, the smuggling fee. You're going to choose the smuggled, you know, the illegal pack of cigarettes, so long as the smuggling fee is less than those two dollars excise tax. Um, because the moment the smuggling fee uh, increases from 185 to let's say two dollars and one cent. That means the choices you have are the three dollar uh, legal cigarettes or uh, the smuggled cigarettes, which cost the one dollar in the south plus this hypothetical two dollars and one cent smuggling fee. So three dollars and one cents for the illegal smuggled cigarettes or this three dollars. You're going to go with the cheaper price. So you could go. Um, the question is, uh, how high could the cost of smuggling go until you don't want to buy those smuggled cigarettes? The answer is up to probably up to 1.99 because if you're given a choice between legal cigarettes, three dollars, and illegally smuggled cigarettes of three dollars, you'd probably go with the legal one. So let's go with um, I you know go with a dollar ninety nine cents or maybe two dollars. Uh, moving on to the next question. Okay, so this reads, um, still assume that the demand for cigarettes in North Texarkana is perfectly inelastic. So I'm going to try to fit in this chart above, So because we still have inelastic demand, um, and that all the smokers in the North are smuggling their cigarettes at a cost of $185 per pack. Okay, so, you know, people in the North, they see the legal price of $3, and they see the illegal price of this $185 plus the $1 so $2.85, they pay that $2.85 because it's lower. So no tax is paid because everyone's buying the smuggled stuff. Is there any inefficiency in the situation? So clearly there's an inefficiency in the situation. So with the tax, uh, and a key thing is that perfectly inelastic demand uh, and smuggling in place, the same number of cigarettes will be sold in North Texarkana, just uh, none will be sold legally um, with the tax. So all cigarette sales go through South Texarkana uh, and then the smuggles. So the inefficiency is the dollar and eighty-five cents per pack um, that's being spent to smuggle the cigarettes from the south to the north. Uh, and then if so, dollar eighty-five. Now suppose a chip is made in um, packaging, which makes it impossible to smuggle cigarettes across the state border. 
is there any inefficiency in this new situation? Uh, and then if so, how much per pack? Okay, so what happens? Uh, somehow, uh, you know, chip technology, technology makes it impossible to smuggle goods uh, from over the border. So what's the new price? Okay, well, you don't have those $2.85 per pack illegally smuggled cigarettes anymore. So the price per pack, you know, you're not given a choice anymore. Um, it means you have to pay the $3 per pack. Uh, once again, um, the demand curve is perfectly inelastic. So no matter what the price is, you're still going to get the exact same quantity of cigarettes sold. So you have equilibrium price of $3 uh, that's being sold in North Texarkana. And all the cigarettes are being sold in North Texarkana. So if all smuggling is prevented by technology, all cigarette sales in North Texarkana go to the legal tax sales. Uh, and then the surplus lost, um, and then all surplus lost by the tax goes to the government um, in the form of tax revenues. Um, you know, all the surplus that, uh, say, would have gone to the consumer and producer, all of that's going to the tax and gov in the going to the government in form of the tax revenues. Uh, in that situation, there's no inefficiency. Uh, and then with perfectly inelastic demand curve, there's also no dead weight loss. Great. Thanks. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, thank you. Bye.